Welcome back to Lee's Lately. Before we get into this one, if you could just hit that sub button down below, that would really help me out. But today's video is about the fact that finally, at last, the EFL have approved the 49ers Enterprises takeover of Leeds United. And this is great news for Leeds fans because it means that we can finally get the ball rolling on some transfers. Now, we have brought in um, a couple of youth players, including uh, Lewis Pyrie from up in Scotland, but it's now that we're going to be starting to see some first team players. It's not coincidence that yesterday we started to see um, some more rumours, including in the thumbnail, Glenn Kamara and Ethan Ampadu. Uh, and there was also... Um, somebody who's going to come in at a, a sort of sporting director level, um, which is a little bit ahead of the time scale of what we originally thought, because Nick Hammond, who I made a video about as well, who is our temporary sporting advisor, uh, was here to oversee this first transfer window um, and maybe even the second one until he could get a proper sporting director in. But it looks like that timetable is a little bit ahead of schedule. But uh, Nick Hammond is still going to be overseeing the transfers for this summer, which segues us nicely into the fact that the first one is going to be Ethan Ampadu. Now, Ethan Ampadu originally, when it first broke yesterday, uh, was looking like people were saying around £12 million. And a lot of people were saying that is quite expensive. Um, but it's now looking like it's going to be around £7 million, which I think is actually a really good deal for somebody who, still only at the age of 22, has played so many games, uh, obviously being on loan from Chelsea to, to teams like uh, Spezia and Venezia in, Sp uh, in Spain, in Italy, uh, where Andrea Russo, if you don't know Andrea, he uh, features on the Just Joe Football Show and other Leeds channels quite a lot, Italian football expert and Leeds United fan. Uh, he mentioned how Ethan Ampadu is best player playing in midfield. He's an okay defender. Um, his positioning leaves a lot to be desired as a defender, but as a midfielder, he's able to be a little bit of that destroyer role, quite similar to what Tyler Adams does. Um, but he does try to progress the ball a lot more than what Tyler Adams does. Um, he tries to spray balls out wide and he tries to get balls in, uh, in those uh, wings for our wingers. But... Under Daniel Farker, um, Norwich really didn't play many um, long balls. In fact, they were actually 24th in the championship the season that they got promoted um, for long balls. So Daniel Farker would be expecting players to keep the ball on the deck and keep it tidy. Ethan Ampadu, though, would still be able to try his progressive passing um, because the options that we should have in midfield and on the wings uh, will allow for players to come short, other players to go long and, and provide options to play the ball forward. And Ethan Ampadu could be a good part of that. Um, obviously, like I say, he's also played a lot of his games as a centre-half um, but we, I think as Leeds fans, should be expecting him to come in as a central midfielder because Nat Phillips is also rumoured to have an agreed deal in place, but obviously it's not completely signed off yet, to come in and be our right centre-back. So you'd imagine that Verba, obviously, probably for us, for me at least, um, was the best centre-back at the club last season, um, even though he only came in in January. Um, and I think he will be the left centre-back, and I think the right centre-back will be Nat Phillips. So really be expecting Ethan Ampadu to slot into that midfield role. Um, I will do a lot more detailed analysis on Ethan Ampadu as and when um, we get more solid evidence of him actually signing, uh, and you'll get a proper tactics breakdown on him. But given that he's going to be playing in the midfield, if we can keep hold of Tyler Adams, that brings us on to Glenn Kamara. Now, Glenn Kamara, um, a lot of people have seen people's lineups on Twitter and stuff where they're saying how we could set up at the start of the season. And a lot of people have been putting Glenn Kamara in front of Tyler Adams and Ethan Ampadu in that midfield role. Um which under Daniel Farker would actually be a number 10 role and Glenn Kamara is far from a number 10. Um, Glenn Kamara is actually more of a number 8 box-to-box -box midfielder or a holding midfielder. Now, last season he played 9 games at holding midfielder, 10 games at uh, a proper central midfielder. Um, and so he would then be fighting for the place with uh, Ethan Ampadu, who we just mentioned, and Tyler Adams, who we've just mentioned. So... For me, Glenn Kamara doesn't actually start. Um, nothing to do with how good of a player he is or anything like that, but the way that things have been set up, if you're signing Ethan Ampadu for £7 million and come into the Championship from Chelsea, obviously he's played for Sheffield United as well, um, 
he would be expecting to start in there. And I think that'll be sort of part of the negotiations that he will be. Um, it'll be a priority for him to be one of the first names on the team sheet every week, given that he's dropping down to the championship. So I can't imagine where Glenn Kamara fits in unless Tyler Adams is leaving. Now, this could be taken one of two ways. It's either a hint that Tyler Adams might be on his way out uh, and that we need backup to cover that, or we need depth. And we, def we definitely do need depth, and especially in those positions in that central midfield is where we look the lightest. Um, we have players like Darko JB and... Um, not really Shackleton, but who am I thinking of? Lewis Bate as well looked good in that in that preseason friendly against Manchester United. Obviously, those players will be the sort of players who come off the bench and, and maybe start getting their minutes up throughout the season. Um, but I think Glenn Kamara having a bit more experience as a 27-year-old um, Finnish international as well. Um, he's not finished, he's Finnish. Um, and... It seems to me like it's a bit of experience to come in and sit on the bench. That's what I'm hoping because you need to rotate in the championship. There's 46 games. It's a long, long season. We're back to midweek games, Saturday games, midweek games, Sunday games. Um, so you kind of need a squad who can be rotated and still have good quality. And I think Glenn Kamara provides that coming off the bench. Um, obviously helped Rangers to a, a Europa League final. Um, he helped them to uh, their, was it their 55th uh, SPL win? Um, but yeah, Glenn Kamara is a very serviceable, decent midfielder. And obviously if he does come in again, I will be doing a lot more detail on him. But for now, um, you can sort of expect that he might come in and maybe sit on the bench and be a very good uh, rotation player and provide us a little bit more quality in that in that scenario in which we do need to bring somebody off the bench. Um but yeah, th those are the two main ones that have been linked at the moment. There's obviously as well, like I've mentioned earlier, Nat Phillips. And if Nat Phillips comes in, there'll be a full video on him. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do a bit of a roundup really because finally the 49ers have sole control of the club and we are able to start making some moves in the transfer market. Um, I think it'll be Ethan Ampadu will be the first one through the door. The first signing of this new era will be Ethan Ampadu. Um, uh, and then maybe Glenn Kamara. Uh, Nat Phillips and then we could see some more as well Emmanuel Dennis who I made a video on uh, just yesterday or the day before um, the only other thing is a couple of outgoings as well um, Mark Rocker is now at Real Betis and Rasmus Christensen I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in the video is now at Roma um, on loan both of them and Joel Robles has put out a statement as well saying that he won't be back at Leeds United, but thank you for everything, which I think is a shame, really. I think it was an opportunity, really, to take Joel Robles, even if he wasn't going to be first choice keeper, to be our backup keeper still, because I think he's a very serviceable goalkeeper, a very decent goalkeeper. I think he would have been one of the best in the championship. Um, not massively decent with his feet, and that's maybe why Daniel Farker didn't want to keep him, um, but he was an excellent shot stopper and a, a very solid goalkeeper is what you can say about Joel Robles. Um, other than that, though, yes, those are the outgoings. Um, apparently, we can only loan out one more player that is over the age of 21. Um, that is a, an EFL rule. Um, so we can only loan out one more player. So I don't know if we're going to use that or if we're going to start loaning out some of the younger players or what, but um, we have loaned out quite a lot of players now. So hopefully now is the time when we start seeing some incomings. So let me know what you think about um, or everything that's going on at the club at the moment. Are you excited? Are you expecting that we might actually sign some players soon? It's been pretty well reported by Fabrizio Romano, Phil Hay, Graham Smith, um, Popey, um, uh, Joe Donahue, all the basically all the leads outlets and uh, reporters have been reporting this Ethan Ampadu one, so it's pretty much um, a sure thing. Um, it will be in the next couple of days, I would expect. Um, obviously, given medicals and stuff like that um but yes it's an exciting one it's an ambitious it's wage bill being aggressive it's what they promised so let's hope for much more uh much more of this in the future thank you for watching this one and uh, i should see you next time see you next time. oh got through the whole video without doing that and then i did it right at the end i shall see you in the next one where we're probably doing a bit more of a deep dive on some of these transfers thanks for watching leads lately and i'll see you in the next one